I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. (coughs) Greetings. I've had two Sasquatch encounters in my life. The most recent was in July of 2018. I was tubing down the Rainbow River near Ocala, Florida with three friends. This area is Florida Cypress Swamp, which is teeming with wildlife, mostly birds, fish, and many species of snakes, alligators, and deer. I observed a water bird standing on a tree stump. I then observed a dark brown furry hand reaching towards the bird. There was a large humanoid ape-like creature squatting behind a cypress tree attempting to grab the bird. The creature quickly swatted toward the bird in a grabbing motion as if he was attempting to capture it. The bird rapidly dove into the water, escaping the creature's grasp. At this time, there were two boys approximately 8 to 10 years old laughing and splashing in the river behind me. The creature immediately looked at the children and then looked at me. I made eye contact with it and it immediately started looking around before it ducked behind the brush. This creature was approximately 8 feet tall, with extremely wide shoulders, weighing maybe 400 pounds or more. The creature attempted to blend in with the foliage, but its brown coat was conspicuous against the mostly green plants that surrounded him. As I slowly floated downstream, I observed the creature stand up and wildly run off into the woods with its arms flailing high above its shoulders in a hopping stride. This experience was utterly terrifying as I was close enough to see the creature's muscle tone and piercing brownish-black eyes. Hi. This was back in either 1989 or 90. My age now is 50. Friends and I would go to Lake Shasta area, California. We would explore the cave systems and mines. We'd go above the tree line. We came across a dead black bear. There were no bites, and the bear was beaten up. Its head was bashed and punched in and swollen. The body was beaten with swollen bumps on it. We all ran. We'd go back often looking for anything, just adventure. We went back to what we remembered to be the area of the bear. We went into a cave or mine. It was wide, deep, and high. There was an awful odor. Some stayed back, but we didn't. We came across a bunch of dead coyotes. They were badly beaten as well. Swollen lumps, bashed in heads. One had a broken back. It looked like a V. We all left. We were scared, angry, yelling, very afraid, lost, pissed at each other. No one wanted to be there. A few of us would go back often, curious and angry, looking for answers. No one wanted to talk to the police or rangers. We thought we were tough and could find the answers. This day, on our way down from the rocky area, heading towards the trees, is when we saw it. A Bigfoot. The creature, I say it respectfully, was just there, standing right on our path, not moving and just staring back. The distance was about the length of three school buses. No one moved. It began to walk towards us, upright. It was right on us and walked past us, literally by about six feet. It had the face of a Neanderthal. It had a broad human nose. It the creature, man, had lips. Its eyes were dark and there was a dead stare in them. The eyes definitely, 100%, had a white-gray film over them. It had nipples but no breasts, huge muscles. Parts of the body had less hair. It had less hair on its sides of its hips. The skin that I could see looked raw, dry, or scaly on its hips. There were wrinkles on the area of the chest connecting to the shoulder. Its face was man. It had teeth, not fangs. Its hair was black with reddish in it. The hair was longer on its back, the back of the neck, and shorter on the head. Under the arms were long hairs. Upper arms looked like thinned hair. Legs were hairy on the upper legs and short from the knees down. Front part of the chest and stomach had hair that was either just short or thinned. This is where you could see more skin than the rest of the body, hips, and face, and I saw the front of the neck with patches of hair. The facial skin was dark tan with reddish, irritated areas under the eyes, crossing the top bridge of the nose. The eyes were Asian shape. I'm 5'10", one of my friends there was 6'3". 
This creature stood about seven foot seven. My friend said as it passed by, he saw bloody claw marks on its upper back. This creature was very, very wide, square, really thick. Its arms were long and its hands were visible. As its arms went up, its hands would start to close as it hit the top position. I remember this because I thought it was an expression of hate or anger and thinking it was about to grab us. I want to clarify the neck. There wasn't a neck like a human. I'm referring to its neck area. I saw flesh there. It appeared to have no neck from behind. So I'm just saying that the area under its head and above the chest had less hair. I don't recall any bloody scars. The whole body had muscles moving under the hair. When I saw the creature, we all had the same thought. We're dead. We had similar thoughts. Our minds were trying to run, but our bodies were stuck. My body felt emotions that I've never ever felt again. My body felt physical aches of soreness for such a long time. I had panic attacks, nightmares, anxiety, and cried a lot after. There's no way the government doesn't know about these things. And if a hunter had to shoot it, it would need strong ammo. They would have realized they shot something more man than not. So saying anything could make them afraid of prosecution, I think. I just don't understand how it can stay a mystery. It's so big. Way too easy for us to have encountered it. It wasn't angry, scared, but it was aware. I've never been back to that area. When I hike, I camp elsewhere. I stay where the people are. I have lots of questions. I can't tell anyone, so I'm saying it here. None of us from then could even stand being around each other afterwards. We tried. It just screwed with our minds. Even felt guilty for seeing it. There's no understanding it. Its face was a man's face. On Monday, December 20th, 2021, I was deer hunting in eastern Virginia with my grandson. At exactly 4.40 in the evening, I heard what sounded like two heavy sticks being hit together. It was coming toward us from the south. I told my grandson, 11 years old at the time, to get his gun ready. When we saw what was making the sound, my grandson immediately turned to me and asked, Grandpa, is that Bigfoot? I had to say that I didn't know what it was. The animal was moving southwest to northeast and covered approximately 60 yards of thick brush over unlevel terrain in under five seconds. I have always been a Bigfoot skeptic, but I have been in the woods every day since, and every bit of evidence that I have found points in that direction. Tree structures and two to three inch thick saplings broken off 12 feet off the ground, and the broken off tops nowhere to be found. And tonight, two footprints in different locations. I'm old school and I don't own a smartphone, so I could not get a picture. I don't think we could have gotten a picture anyway, because the thing moved so quickly. The best I can do is a description. It was over seven feet tall, over 400 pounds, walking, running, upright, without any wobbling gait like that of a bear. It was covered with smooth black hair and we could not detect anything like a neck. The head was cone-shaped and blended right into the shoulders. We saw it from its left side and no facial features could be detected. I'm trying to figure out what we saw. I need to know. My grandson believes we saw a Bigfoot. The couple who lives across the street contacted me today, December 27, 2021, and both say they saw a Bigfoot walk through their yard this week as well. I had an experience back in June of 2021. I'm 52 years old and grew up in North Mississippi hunting and fishing, and we hunted to eat, not just for sport. I've never been afraid of the dark. Coon hunting was a big deal growing up. Well, my wife and I had separated in May of 2021, and I was staying at my in-law's property in an old house they had. The house was built 80 years ago, my father-in-law told me, and built out of rough-cut lumber. The roof is tin, the outside walls have wood siding. It had a small porch that had a wrought iron table and chairs, and the table had a marble top. They were very heavy. I would sit out on the porch in the mornings and evenings for fresh air and to have a cigarette. The driveway is one lane, 
gravel that runs three feet beside the house, and it curves through a patch of woods sixty yards in front. There's a power right away that parallels the drive on the right. I was sitting on the porch one evening, as usual, just reflecting. It was twenty minutes before black dark. I noticed movement on the power line. It was two small, four-legged animals, so I focused on the driveway, hoping to see the animals cross. Two bobcats came out and slowly approached my direction. I was amazed to see two bobcats together. They seemed to not notice me. They came to thirty feet from me and started playing with something in the driveway. They had caught a snake and was having a good time with it. I then noticed movement back behind them in the driveway, so I focused on that. It looked like someone slowly headed our way, but whoever it was had all black on from head to toe. Remember, it's June in Mississippi, so it was hot. When it made it to ten feet from the bobcats, they spotted it. In two leaps, they were gone. The person, or what I now know, was a Bigfoot, got to the now-dead snake and got down on its hands and knees. I whistled at it and asked who's there, but there was no response. It hadn't hit me what I was looking at yet. I stood and stepped off the porch and took ten steps toward it and stopped. That's when a funky odor hit me. My mind was screaming at me to get back. I slowly backed to the porch and stepped onto it, and it popped. I saw the creature's head raise up in my direction. My phone was in the house charging, so I was trying to open the door slow and reach in to retrieve my phone. My forty-five was beside the phone also. By now, the outside security light came on. It was dark. Before I could get my phone, the creature stood up and walked away. That's when I got scared. Its arms were long, hands to its knees, but it was maybe only five or six feet tall, and lanky, not very broad. I went inside and locked everything the best I could. The windows were old wood frame windows with no locks. I took my phone and forty-five pistol and went to the bedroom. I finally fell asleep, and sometime around 1.30 a.m., I was startled awake by the sound of someone stepping up on the porch. It pops and squeaks when a person steps up. Dogs or cats are not heavy enough to make it do that. Now I'm wide awake. Whoever was on the porch bumped into the chairs and table, knocking them over. My ears were strained, listening. Then it stepped off the porch and started around the house. The windows are covered with sheer thin curtains that I could see through. When it came by the second window in the bedroom, I saw two very huge silhouettes. Two! They were talking to each other in a mumbling kind of language. I couldn't see their heads because they were as tall as the house. They were feeling along the outside walls, way up the wall where the roof meets. They circled the entire house. Finally, I couldn't hear anything anymore. I never closed my eyes the rest of the night. At 7 a.m., I finally opened the front door to see the table and chairs on their side. I got in my car and got out of there and moved two weeks later. Hi, I'm 59 years old and I grew up in Ithaca, and my folks owned a farmhouse way out on Route 13 near County Line Road. We had gorges in the area, and our house was once a sawmill, but when the State Highway Department moved the creek for the road in the 1950s, the house was no longer on the creek. It was built about 1830, same family owned it until just before my folks bought it. It had an artesian spring that ran down the north wall of the cellar and drained into a small hole in the dirt floor. We had a lot of odd experiences in the house, and on the property and area in general. A UFO flap was well reported in a magazine in 1966 to 1967, and J. Allen Hynek and his team came to Newfield, New York to investigate. Among his official findings, he recorded, I believe these people experienced something and there was at least a hundred people at that town meeting. We moved to the farm in 1968 or 69, and I used to see what I called the tree people, and hiking as a kid I'd hear them talk to me. I was never afraid in the woods hiking. Matter of fact, I felt protected and safe. That old barn was a scary place. My mum and I both saw red eyes peering out from behind the second-story hay door on several occasions. One time... I had a ball appear from over the west hills and swoop down over my head five feet above my head. 
and my mum and older brother saw this, but I could not hear them yelling at me on my bike in the driveway. I had my back to them. I felt weird, and all the hair on my head was on end, and my nose started running, and I got dizzy. Putting my feet on the ground, I looked back and saw my family running toward me. The ball took off to the east and got real big as it dropped behind the hill. I saw it then, but I did not see it over me or when it approached. I still recall that like yesterday. That house hasn't changed since we lived there, and that old beaten down barn still hides in the thick trees and bushes. It was falling down in the 1970s. A brother of the great-granduncle of our neighbor died in the barn when his brother pulled up on the hay fork to pull hay up through the floor chute onto the second floor. The hook slipped and ripped off the front of his face and forehead. He died there. We were told that story a week before we moved from the farm. I think it explained some of the cold and ominous feelings in that barn, but not those red eyes. That was something different and very scary. It felt like those eyes went right through us. We moved to Southern California in 1977. I went back in 2017, and the area still has a haunted feeling in places. Almost a lonely, foreboding feeling that seems to call out to me to this day. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you enjoyed today's video, here's one you don't want to miss. Also, if you have a story you'd like to share on this channel, email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com. I hope to hear from you soon.